Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the sermon part of RT Ministries. The sermon today is from Luke 23, 8 through 11. Now the title of this sermon is, is He Said Nothing. Why do people come to Christ? There's, people come to Christ for a lot of different reasons. Some come to Him for just a ticket out of hell. They think, well, gee, I'm going to go to hell, so I'm going to do everything I can do to stay out of there, you know. Other people come to Him just to... He's almost an amusing thing to come to. Others come to Him just to add Him as another God to their shelf. They really don't think He's God, but they think He's important enough to go to... Some people just go to church to go to church because that'll save them. They think that'll save them, you know. But... Frankly, a lot of people that come to Christ, he says nothing. It's empty because they came to him for the wrong reasons. Number one, they don't know they're sinners. They won't admit they're a sinner. They think they're pretty good people, but they come to Christ to get maybe a ticket out of hell or maybe just to have this world and heaven too. But he says nothing to them. There's a lot of people in ch the churches in America are full of people who are unsaved because he said nothing to them. Don't think Jesus Christ don't know your motives. Jesus knows motives of everyone. He's God. Again, the title is He Said Nothing. A lot of people come to Him, cry out to Him, ask Him to save Him, and He says nothing. They walk away deluded thinking they're saved. Here's an instance where Herod, where, uh, Herod did the same thing. He wanted to see Jesus. He's been long, for a long time, he's wanted to see Jesus. We'll pick it up in verse 8. Now Herod was very glad when he saw Jesus. Now here it says he was very glad. He was excited. He wanted to see him. He wanted to see who he was because obviously he heard about him. Jesus was, was, was curing people, you know, blindness and raising the dead. He's doing all this kind of stuff and Herod heard about him. He was very glad to see him. Being very glad to see Jesus doesn't mean you're there for salvation. You know, frankly, when I was saved, God convicted me of my sin, and I knew I was a sinner, and I was more scared than anything. I rejoiced when the Lord saved me, but I didn't come to Him like a showpiece. And frankly, a lot of people go to these signs and wonders meetings to see something, to get something. If you've come to Christ to get something from Him, He's going to say nothing to you. If you come to get a miracle, you come to get healed, or you're going to raise the dead, or all, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that happen in the world that isn't from God at all. Just because somebody does a miracle or a sign doesn't mean it's from Jesus Christ. And how do you tell? This is the problem. How do you know? You've got to match it with Scripture. But frankly, there's a lot of people that go to the meetings, you know, the charismatic movement, the bouncing around, the tongues, all that stuff. They're there to see something, to feel something. And they're glad to be in there, but they're not there to know Christ. They're there just to get something from him, a good feeling, to get pumped up. And frankly, he's going to say nothing to you. So Herod was very glad when he came and he saw Jesus. For he had wanted to see him for a long time. Because he had been hearing about him and was hoping to see some sign performed by him. Here's the real motive. He was hoping to see some sign performed by him. Didn't want to know him, didn't care who he was. He just wanted for what he could do. When Jesus fed the 5,000 people, there were 5,000 people plus uh, wives and children, so it must have been around 10,000 people that fought. There were people that wanted to be with him because he could produce food. They, want, they got something from him, so they followed him because all these people left him. At the end, when he went down the Villa Della Rosa, down to the temple, cleared out the temple, they were all gone. They left him. Herod was very glad. He wanted to see him for a long time and was hoping to see a sign performed by him. I'll tell you this. Jesus Christ is no performer. Herod got nothing from him. Jesus is not a performer. If you go to a, a miracles and wonders, signs and wonders, revival or in a church, he's not there to do miracles. So you'll see nothing from him. And you might see miracles. You might see all these people bouncing around, you know, barking like a dog and all this other ridiculous stuff. You might see all that stuff, but it's not from God. You, he says Nothing. If you come for anything from him, he'll give you nothing. Verse 9. 
and he quest here's his Herod, and he questioned him at some length. But here's the key to the whole verse. He said, he answered him nothing. You know, there's some people out there that just want to question you to try to trick you or to trap you. They don't want to know nothing about Christ. They don't care about nothing about Christ. Doesn't matter what you prove from the Bible. Doesn't matter the verses you bring out. They still don't want to know nothing. And frankly, Jesus is telling them nothing. So sometimes it's okay to fuss not to say anything. Jesus said nothing. Sometimes you just say nothing. You don't have to answer people. God will give you enough discernment to know if people want to know. You'll know. Because most people that I've talked to, a lot of people that I've talked to, frankly, didn't want to know the Lord. They just wanted to argue. They don't believe it anyway. It gets down to them not believing the Bible. Well, if somebody says they don't believe the Bible, there's no point in talking to them anymore. What, what can you say? So Jesus answered him nothing. Verse 10. And the chief priests and the scribes were standing there accusing him vehemently. And while he was answering Herod nothing, all the chief priests and the scribes were screaming and yelling at him and charging him with all this stuff. And remember, this is God they're talking to. They're trying, they're trying to condemn God, accusing him vehemently. It means they were very loud about it. And Jesus said nothing. Verse 11. And Herod with the soldiers, after treating him with contempt and mocking him, this is, see, Herod wanted him to give him a show, but this is the real heart of Herod right here. After treating him with contempt, so they were, they were mocking him, they were treating him with contempt, saying, you're not who you say you are, and mocking him. This is, look at, the heart of Herod has not changed. He didn't want to know the Lord. He's still sinful. He's still mocking Christ. He's still insulting him. He's still doing all that stuff because his heart never wanted to be changed and Herod certainly didn't know how sinful he was. After they had contempt and mocked him, dressed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. Herod didn't get what they wanted from Jesus Christ so they said they mocked him, had, had treated him with contempt, put a nice robe that's supposed to fit on the king and sent him back to Pilate. Again, Herod never wanted to know Jesus Christ. And all the people that come to Jesus Christ, he'll say, all the people that come to Jesus Christ who just want something from him, don't really want to know him, maybe you just want to take it out of hell but go back to their own life, he'll say nothing. He said nothing to Herod because Herod was a wicked man. And everybody that comes to Jesus Christ, whether you're a sweet old lady or a young teenager or all that stuff that come to him and want something he reject and he won't say nothing because your heart is still wicked and your heart is still sinful the bible says all people's hearts are wicked most people nowadays do not believe that they're wicked they think they're pretty good people and every one of them people will not come to jesus christ and, he, and even if they do he will not answer them you have got to come to jesus christ broken know you're a sinner when people say you got to know you're a sinner it means you got to be broken you know you can't do it the night Jesus saved me, I knew I was headed to hell. I had no excuses. I had no nothing. I knew everything I did, God seen, and he was going to judge me for. And I knew I deserved it. He saved me. Not because I deserved it, because of his grace. You come to Jesus Christ, we'll just give an example. Like a Buddhist comes to Jesus Christ. He wants to keep Buddha and he wants to keep Christ. He'll say to them nothing. If you're a Hindu, and you got there's thousands of gods in the Hindu religion. If you got Shiva up on your altar and you try to take Jesus Christ and put him up on the altar too, he will say nothing to you. You've got to get rid of all your other gods. Deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. All the other gods have to go. If you're not willing to do that, I don't care how sincere you are, he will not say anything to you. He will not save you. Salvation hasn't happened if you haven't given up your other gods. Or to the person who's just off the street wants, wants something from Jesus Christ. Their parents are sick or whatever. Their kids are sick. They come to Christ. They ask him, you know, they have all this faith. They ask, supposed faith. They ask the pastors to pray for them, to do this, to do that. Jesus doesn't save them. Their kids die and they pfft, don't want nothing to do with Christ. He answers them nothing. And frankly, there's a good portion of the population that's, I would say, 70, 80% of the population that think they're Christian are not. It's a large percentage now. You know if you're saved. Everybody out there knows. You've got to come to Jesus Christ broken, 
and sincere, broken. Repent of your sins. Turn to Christ when you're broken, to the one that can save you, and he'll lift you up and he'll answer you. But to all that hasn't come to him broken, he hasn't answered you. He says nothing. Now, you don't have to be like this. None of you have to die in your sins. There's a lot of people out there that think they're saved and they're not. Again, you got to know you're a sinner. you got to be broken, and God is the only one that can do that. If he breaks you, you'll come to his son, you'll come through his son and get to God through Jesus Christ. Don't be one of them that he says nothing to. Don't be pumped up by what you see in the miracles and the signs and wonders and all the other junk. Don't be pumped up. Pump up doesn't save you because soon you'll be pumped down. Soon the feeling leaves and you're wondering what? Nothing's happened. I haven't changed. Well, you haven't changed because he said nothing to you. you got to come to him broken. you got to repent of your sins. you got to admit that I am a wicked sinner. I know I'm a wicked. This is me. I'm talking right now to me. I know I'm a wicked person inside. The only good thing about me is Christ. And you got to know that too. Come to him. He said he wouldn't turn you away if you come. But you can't just come on your terms, you come on his terms, because frankly, he's God. Once you come to him, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him. You don't have to die in your sins. Come to him while you still can. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.